welcome you to Lake Nona, Florida, the USTA National Campus, once again the site of the Women's Tennis Championships here in the American. It's championship edition of the War on I-4, both Florida schools advancing to this final day, the Bulls of USF colliding with their in-state rivals, the Knights of UCF. Hi everyone, welcome in here on the American Digital Network. Take a look at the bracket. UCF has not dropped a point this week, including yesterday's sweep over 4C Tulsa. On the other half of things, in order to complete this rivalry clash today, USF in a dramatic 4-3 finish against SMU, coming back from dropping the doubles point. Welcome in here on ADN, Lincoln Rose along with Mark Bay. And Mark, uh, what a great matchup teed up for us here today. I think so. The home team, UCF, has never won a conference championship. Coach Brian Kenyeko only in his third year looking to try to get that piece of history for his team. They carry the number one seeded pressure. But Coach Moros and the Bulls, they've gotten it done before. Even as a seven seed, shocking the conference winning before. So they're clearly the underdogs. They need this win today to make it to the U. Uh, covered in NCAA championships. And for sure, the pressure is going to be on UCF to get it done. But I think the, the challenge of the immediate urgency for USF will make this very interesting. This is the second time we're crowning a champion here in Lake Nona. It was the Bulls with the miraculous finish that year. For UCF, though, this is their home court. What a luxury for them, and we've seen it pay off with this great turnaround for the Knights. It's a beautiful facility. Clearly having an amazing place in Lake Nona that actually you're able to play as your home courts for sure is a court advantage. I feel that USF, though, with the confidence, the experience of doing it here recently and having three seniors on that team that were part of that championship run, I think it actually may even out. Well, of course, the doubles point will be coming up first. Let's take a look at our lineups. What stands out to you? Well, doubles is going to be a crapshoot, I think. You have to favor the Knights slightly at each position, but I feel like Coach Morris was an All-American in doubles back in her day at the University of Texas, and she's got some tricks up her sleeve and down low. I feel like both of those teams are going to be moving a lot. Always falls down to first serve percentages and, and the setup ground strokes to give the net players the opportunity to poach. When we come back, the number one seed Knights, the number two seed Bulls collide with the doubles point on the line as today we crown a champion in the American. People say we're big. Wow. Well, what is big? This is big. It's an energy. An opportunity. This is big, baby! So go on. Dream big. Because big is just the beginning. I got it. <laughs> Just a week ago, as that was senior day, the Knights would pick up the victory. It's a rivalry that has historically favored USF, but as of late, things have gone the Knights' way. Lincoln Rose, Mark Bay, Haley out and with you for our championship coverage today. Coin toss here early on, Mark, and of course, uh, a doubles point hotly contested to get us started. It is a doubles point that the Bulls dropped yesterday in the semifinals against SMU, but with some drama. They were able to take that seventh point, four to three of the victory over SMU yesterday. Coach Morris feels that the longer the match goes, the more it favors her team. She talks a lot about being physical and competing to the end. So sometimes in, in this college format, six games, no ad can go quickly. And you may not always win that doubles point. That's why going for the hard way, you need to have a team that can do both. Win the doubles point and get the first three or obviously go the other way. Well, for the Knights, they opt to put two of their best doubles players together in number one doubles as Kuznetsova and Zaleva right now ranked 19th in the nation as they go up the pairing of Klerich and Zynga. 
And they'll try to set the tempo here early on. Of course, the Knights are wearing the all black across the way at the top of your screen. The Bulls of USF with the white tops. Little shuffle and singles when we see it later on after the Knights did not play their top singles player last week. So it'll be a fresh look between these two rivals as we renew the war on I-4. And it's not just going to be the women. It's going to be a little deja vu mark for the men as well. Both the Knights and the Bulls prevailing here on Easter Sunday playing for a title. Yeah, there's a lot of program pride and wonderful rivalry starting to be built with all these programs. Last year, we were in Dallas on the campus of SMU. This is a conference with great facilities, including, of course, Tulsa, a recent champion, as they hosted the national championships a few years back. And, of course, a few years ago, uh, this became one of the crown jewels of not just college tennis, but for the USTA as a whole, as we are here on the USTA national campus. It is the official home of UCF, just on the edge of Orlando, as here at the UCF Collegiate Tennis Center where UCF is unbeaten this year, 15-0. Coming into this year, they are 23-6 here at this venue over its first couple of years. It really has been a home court advantage for them. Absolutely, and here we are serving in this first game down quadruple break point, now triple break point. That's good work. A able to pull back 40-30. Well, it's nice to have the first serve go in, particularly into the body there, and it gets the partner involved. Wonderful movement. In three courts underway, we stick here with number one doubles at the moment. And Senya have a second serve coming up here. And you see the pressure coming from Zynga moving up. And just like that, we are level 40 all here. So that was a good play. She ended up overstepping there. <laughs> That's actually a, an awful timing for her. She did the right thing. She moved into a position to try to receive the ball after a great return by her partner and just got caught behind. So this is a deuce, no ad. Receiver chooses the side and they've chosen the ad side. And a great first serve. And a reminder of the scoring for the doubles point. All three courts will factor into one point in doubles, trying to give the advantage to one of these two teams. As UCF comes back from 1540 to take the first game there in this set. We just play one set on each court. And as we shift our focus over to number three doubles, this is Serrano and Turkovic for UCF at the top of your court with Clark and Pelissar Pereo here at the near sun. And that one just stays in the alley. So one game into the books over on number one doubles as we'll check back in. Yeah, USF got out to a quick start in that opening game, saw it slip away. It's a Bulls team that has a couple more hours of tennis on their legs. I would say over the past couple days, not yesterday. The women had yesterday off due to weather. The championship originally scheduled for the women yesterday. Instead, double header today for the women and men. But for USF, after getting round one off, 4-2 to two, the victory over the 10 seed Cincinnati. And then yesterday, again, that comeback against SMU after dropping the doubles point. Not a habit, though, that they'll want to fall into. Come on, 
good ground stroke there. And this habit of having the, the cross court rallies and then the eventual moving or engaging of the net player is rather common. You feel that with the wind at your back, you may want to try to move quicker. I think against the wind, you want to be careful about your court position as you're hitting the positional ground strokes. It's a bit of a tug of war, and whoever hits the better ground stroke first often draws an error or gives their partner an opportunity to get a touch or a kill at the net. You see our matchup here on number one doubles right now, UCF across the net. With the Bulls here on the near side. That's a great first serve off of a nice eye formation position there. Try to cause a little bit of disruption in the returner's mind by not giving them the same picture and the same look. It's a great serve with the move. Good coverage. Zinga continues her serve. And she does a great job of spotting two first serves in a row. So wonderful, you know, obviously after the very first game where the Knights were down, quadruple break point, fought it off with quality doubles and held. USF now at two strong points there from Zynga serving to actually get it back to one all. And two holds in the beginning is great confidence wise. You're always a bit nervous in the beginning of these matches and to have a hole for each team is going to help them. Again, these two tandems met a week ago in regular season play. This particular matchup, number one doubles would not finish as the Knights were able to lock up the doubles point on the other two courts. Well done. Good body serve here. This partner moves out of the way and then immediately looking to kill because the return did not have enough quality on it. Yeah, never got comfortable. missed it and it's been very tight across the board at all positions a service hold for each team going across the line so here in this third game 40 love and they'll say just wide Two of the first three games go the way of the Knights here on number one doubles as they find themselves in the driver's seat. Another look as narrowly misses the white line. Well, of course, head coach for the Bulls, uh, Christina Moros, but assisted by Ariel Gaten as well as uh, Gary Needleman former men's assistant who has a lot of success, whether it be with the men or the women now, making it to the finals. Of course, USF men, you can pencil them into the championship, it seems like, every year. As we are over here on number three doubles now, Serrano and Turkovic for UCF across the way, Clark and Pelissera Pareo for the Bulls. So you've got a deciding point here. Stay here for this point. You see one game apiece, 40 all. That's a break for the Bulls. So USF with the slight edge and number three doubles. Back to number one where it's the Knights in the driver's seat up two games to one. It's always interesting the order that you choose to serve. Do you have a stronger server serving first? Or do you have the stronger net player up there first? It's always an interesting. So now you have Clarich starting to serve. That was a good serve down the tee, but an even better return down the line. Read the coverage and then just crushed that return line. Great movement there. For the Knights, of course, in their number one doubles, you have Kuznetsova, a two-time player of the week, including last week, the sophomore from Russia. 
Now, usually we talk about how well these two programs have recruited internationally, but that's nothing new for USF throughout their athletic department. Really has to help get international students acclimated when there are so many in a similar situation when they arrive in Tampa. As right now, Zanga making her way up towards the net. Claridge with the serve. And so you can see it's difficult maybe from our vantage point and our camera angle for you to tell, but the wind right now is behind the UCF team. So that ground stroke is just picking up a ton of speed and had so much on it that Zinga wasn't able to redirect the two-handed backhand volley there. She was trying to control it and steer it, but the power of the return plus a little bit of wind made the difference there. And the Bulls right now trailed by a game here in this lone set. And number one doubles. Great job. And what's nice and, and indicative, I think as you go down the line, the higher the position in doubles, I feel like the more the net girls are really looking to get touches and get involved. And that's an excellent job. Slice serve out wide that was effective. And you don't always immediately plan to poach on that one. But once Zynga saw that the returner was off balance, she took off and was able to get an easy kill. Now, second serve here coming up. And we are even, or not just yet, pardon me, getting ahead of myself. Yeah, she was somewhat challenged there, having hit the open stance backhand. I can't say that was the ideal time to go up the line. Although early in the match, it is nice to take a shot at the net girl from time to time. And the second opportunity again. Knights on the last air, able to level this 40 all. Big point here. And that's a great move. Well, the Knights, a couple of games now have been playing from behind and yet have been able to come through. Instead of it being two games apiece now, a 3-1 itch. Yeah, and I think that it's key because they were able to get through that first game where there were some nerves and some conflict. But the quality of that return and a great look for the backhand poach. Having that confidence to take the initiative on the backhand poach. Which there you see again, that was a pretty standard top spin roll shot that she felt it was going to probably go in, and Mother Nature carries it just a little long. Definitely the winds are much calmer now today than they've had some pretty big gusty conditions the last couple of days because obviously they've had some weather. So this is the calmest that it's been, but it's still some breeze out here on these courts. And I mentioned these two did not finish their court in doubles last week when they met in the lone regular season clash, but... It was the Bulls at the time in the driver's seat in number one doubles. Five games to four. But UCF has overcome some adversity here early on in this go-round here at Lake Nona. I see that ball picks up some steam there. It was a basic roll, but by the time it landed and hit and kicked, Zynga misjudged it. And all the players have been out here for four games. They've got to get themselves acclimated. See there, she was thinking that maybe it might blow out, but it still landed in. Saleva was up at the net for the Knights, ready to pounce on it if needed. No need. Kuznetsova. Again, both of these young women for the Knights, sophomores out of Moscow, Russia. Oh, wow. What a great reflex. I mean, you can't fault Zynga for looking to, to try to fill the middle and taking advantage of maybe a, that's a great return. She looks challenged, so she's not wrong to do that. That was just an amazing play with on the rise timing and a little bit of feel in her hands to get that ball up the line. If you're Zynga at the net, hard to hang your head on that one. Just a beautiful ball. But it's a big time because it gives them triple game point for commanding 4-1 lead. Oh, and now, touche. One down the line, you know, generates another. 
Might not be so simple. Yeah, but I like it. She took her, you know, backhand up the line. She was inside the court. Well balanced. It was a great time to go for that. That's a great serve. Right down the tee. And another shot on the line. Able to sneak in another one. So as we find a pause here, four games to one, the lead for UCF. Let's see if we can shift over to number two doubles where the Knights also have a lead, three games to one. Stolmar and Mattel colliding with Boy and Roman Dominguez. We'll note over at number three doubles, the Knights have just inched ahead as well after they had split the first four games. It's now three to two for the Knights over on number three doubles. Let's slide over to number two doubles. Against Stolmar and Mattel for UCF. Boy and Roman Dominguez for the Bulls. And at the moment, the Knights lead on all three courts trying to capture this doubles point. First ever final appearance for UCF. While the Bulls, a two-time champion as recently as 2017 here in Lake Nona. So UCF, USF is serving here at 30 love. But again, the same sort of pattern that we're seeing at number one doubles where the players that are on the near side of our screen having the a little bit of the support from the wind, taking big cuts off the ground strokes, and it's wreaking havoc for the people that are serving down there on the bottom end. Being able to hold serve on that end is going to probably be the more challenging side for today's doubles match. Amelie Boy, the freshman, and the senior, Ana Roman Dominguez, the senior uh, out of Spain, the pairing for USF. Dolmar, the sophomore Hungarian, paired with Roman Dominguez. Oh, pardon me, uh, with, with Mattel, freshman out of France. Mattel's one of three spring enrollees this semester for the Knights in their lineup regularly. And they were able to plug in beautifully into this program. A couple of freshmen and an upperclassman coming into the program for Coach Kinyeko. They go 6-0 to the Knights in conference. The Bulls trying to battle back here on number two doubles, is able to take advantage of the air. Yeah, it's important to keep the score close, try to make sure that the scoreboard doesn't get away from you so quickly in this, in this six game format with no ad scoring. So both two doubles, which we just witnessed, and three doubles have the Knights up three games to two. It's four to one over on number one doubles. Back to Zynga. Nicole again has been part of your top doubles pairing for the Bulls. For singles, we've seen her at five and six throughout the year. Saw her as high as four singles back in the quarterfinal with a win on her court against Cincinnati. The Bulls have a chance to pull back within two games here. And a second serve coming up for Nicole. And back to a standard formation here. Oh, that's a big time return. Taking a second serve and going with aggression. Big forehand, the top player for the Knights. And now it's Noad and it comes back to her. That number one player mentality, wanting the ball, wanting the pressure wanting to be the one to deliver a crushing blow if she's able to ex execute here and get a 5-1 lead for their team. Right 
now. Zenga back and forth with Zaleva. That's a great move. See, Fortune favors the bold in this doubles, and now in two critical no-add situations, the UCF Knights have had backhand poach moves to successfully win, and that wasn't a great volley. It was just early enough and quick enough that the player was not able to react on the other side. Well, Kuznetsova was tired of being left out. Fortune favors the bold. And it definitely paid off there. I love that that trust and belief and willingness to act and take that backhand poach and fill the middle. That's two games now where no ad has ultimately gone on to favor the Knights. And it just shows you in this format, it could be three all that easily. Knights are inching closer to taking court number one. Whoever can take two courts here in doubles will take that lone doubles point into singles play. And now even though the score has gotten away from them and you can tell on their faces that they're a little disgusted about how such a close match is not so far on the scoreboard. The key, even if you're down like this, is to hang and battle and compete because as matches come off, there's that feeling of momentum for the other team working towards the actual doubles points. So you want to stay out here, even if you're not able to turn it around, you want to stay out here as long as possible for your teammates. That's a good move. Zenga and Klerich, again, a regular pairing, but they have not been paired together since these two teams collided. It's been Zenga and Mios on number one doubles here in the tournament this week, both against Cincinnati and SMU. We'll likely see Mios in the singles lineup. Make her debut today. Yeah, it's a great return. It just misses a little long. At this point, six games in, everyone has to be sort of adjusted to how the court is playing. And Missing long on our near side of the screen has been a very common error for all the girls. Again, pick, big picture right now. UCF has a lead on all three doubles courts. Five games to one here on number one doubles. Next door at two doubles. USF is flirting with leveling it at three games apiece. Oh, that's good coverage. There's definitely a bit of a chase on the service toss by Kuznetsova. Her toss goes to the right quite a bit, which generally makes her serve have more of a slice taint to it. I think Zynga's got to be ready for that, to get behind that a little bit. There's a match point here at number one doubles. And there it is. And the two Russian Knights come through on number one doubles. That leaves the Knights just needing one of the remaining two courts. Let's see if we can jump over to number three doubles after this final look. Yeah, it's good solid doubles. Lots of great body serve locations and a lot of support and help from the net players. Great effort at number one. Very clean match for the Lady Knights. So here we are again for the Bulls across the way. Clark and Pelisser Pareo. Serrano and Turkovic here on the near side for the Knights. Natalia Serrano, the only senior for the Knights this year on this championship program. Had her senior day fall against these Bulls. Brian Kenyeko gives Natalia Serrano a lot of credit. He inherited her, and she was a big part of the turnaround for this program. And now they're having the opportunity to serve and close out the match here. Breaking from ahead with the wind and now serving with the wind. A great first serve and an outstanding overhead. Coach Kenyeko feels that his, his girls didn't need a pep talk. Feels like they know what's at stake. And so far they've responded in this doubles point. Yeah, number two doubles is even three games apiece, but that may be a moot point here in a moment. If Serrano and Turkovich can put this one away. It would be the second straight match that the Bulls have dropped the doubles point here in Lake Nona. They did so against SMU, obviously, though. They're still here. 
be able to come back in singles. On this Easter Sunday, fans coming out to cheer on these two Florida programs. We are certainly mindful that while both these universities are in state, many of their competitors and their families have a slightly longer trek to get here, including some international flights. And here's how precarious it is for the Bulls receiving this surf. Knights have a cushion to work with. They're running an eye formation here on the match point. And the fault. And service there will pull the Bulls a little closer to hanging on here on doubles court number three. And that'll do it. Knights take the doubles point here on Championship Sunday. Courts one and three with here on doubles three, Serrano and Turkovich coming through. And all of a sudden, all the Knights need to do the rest of today is play even tennis and split our six singles courts coming up on the horizon. And just a moment, we'll have a chance to check in with Haley Out. Uh, obviously a significant advantage now for UCF. The Knights this year are 18 and one when they capture the doubles point. It's only slipped away from them five times and frankly, they've won more than half of those in comeback efforts. The comeback not going to be needed today. Yeah, I think that this doubles point can always be a positive when you win it and can sometimes be an igniter if you're not able to get it done. But I think for a team that has yet to win the title and, and has obviously had a disappointment last year, it's a great start towards uh, what Coach uh, Brian Kenyeko wants today and obviously his first championship in his third year. Again, Brian Kenyeko, former standout for the Buckeyes at Ohio State. Just graduated 10 years ago. First head coaching job was in the Ivy League with Brown for a couple years. Now in year three with his women's program for the Knights. Has them in the top 25 at the moment. A 21 and three campaign. They were unblemished in conference at six and zero, oh, and were able to sweep both Memphis and Tulsa, the eight and four seed respectively here in Lake Nona. And what a home court advantage it is uh, every day that you're, quote, at home playing right here at the USTA National Campus. And don't let Coach Kenyeko's very calm exterior fool you. He was one of the most amazing competitors for the Buckeyes back when he played. Let's check in with Haley Outen here in just a moment as you see her catching up with Coach Kenyeko. Haley? Coach, able to take a one-point lead into singles play. Initial thoughts on how your team got started. Uh, I thought it was good, you know, but it's just one point. We got to get three more somehow. So, uh, you know, they're a good team. They pushed us last time that we played, and uh, we're just going to have to expect a war and see what we can get. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Haley, thank you. As uh, Coach doesn't know it, but his ultimate goal is to have another conversation with Haley later on today. <laughs> yeah, he's obviously a man of few words. He knows it's a lot of work to do. You know, obviously want to get, you know, count your chickens before they hatch, if you will, but I feel that he's got his girls with the right game face and attitudes on. We're going to step aside when we come back to Lake Nona. Singles courts, six courts wide here for the American title. UCF needs just three. The Bulls will need four if they are to claim their third title in American history. for a fourth straight year. Cueto from 30. Unbelievable. And be able to celebrate the seventh championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American.
Powerful minds. Strong in mind. Strong in body. The American is dedicated to promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. If it is okay to seek help for injuries we can see, then it needs to be okay to seek help for injuries we can't see. Mental health awareness is important because I think a lot of times it goes unnoticed in college athletics. We look after our bodies and it's just as important to look after our mental health. It's time to end the stigma. Related to mental health and seeking help. End the stigma. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle, a big save, a clutch hit, or a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. There is power in the sportsmanship that is displayed across the American. Power is respecting opponents, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power for life. The American. Power for life. The American. Power for life. People say we're big. Well, what is big? This is big. It's an energy. An opportunity. So go on. Dream big. Because big is just the beginning. I got it. <laughs> Strong in mind, strong in body, strong in school, sport, life. The grind is 10% physical and 90% mental. The mind is the power. The body is a means to jump higher, run faster, be smarter, and live longer. There is no weakness when it comes to seeking help. We are stronger together. So let's talk about it. A waterfall starts with one drop. Change starts with one person. The American is dedicated to ending the stigma related to mental health and promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni Rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. To get underway, all six courts about to be occupied in Lake Nona. Third straight year, the Knights have been able to call the USDA National Campus home. Doubles point went to the Knights. Let's get you our lineups here for singles play. You see here on number one singles, it is Zaleva against. Roman Dominguez. Well, note number two doubles is Kuznetsova and Klerich. Three singles, Stolmar and Pelissaire Pereo. Uh, Mattel matched up with Boy on four. Over at five, it's Serrano and Zinga. And six, Sharma and Mios. Mios not factoring into doubles. We'll try to make an impact for the Bulls on court six and singles. And again, these two teams did meet eight days ago. As again, our lineup here today, uh, our emphasis early on will be with number one and Zaleva and Roman Dominguez.
Zaleva did not play singles eight days ago in that conference finale with the Bulls. But she otherwise has been uh, locked in at number one this year for UCF. Yeah, Coach Kanyeko said she was a little dinged up and needed to rest. And being able to beat this team, missing their star player, I feel obviously is a boost psychologically for them. And then to have her back in the lineup today changes the matchups to some degree, so it's not necessarily a full rematch type of atmosphere. So Zaleva stays right here on court one while Ana Roman Dominguez slides over. Ana has also been number one all year long while really the rest of the lineup for Coach Moros has been in flux, two through six. But Zaleva with the ideal start, sweeping her way there through game number one. And Ramon Dominguez is a tough, tough out. So lots of experience. She's you know, probably you know, a couple spots away from being into the NCAA individuals this year based on her performances, a couple top 10 wins this year. So she definitely has the pride and the spirit of this program, and she's not going to go down without a hell of a fight or an outstanding performance by Zaleva. Valeria ready to go here for the second game. Again, I mentioned this earlier. Zaleva was just a spring enrollee with a couple of her other two teammates in time to start the semester in January, and all of them have been a significant factor in the lineup for Coach Kanyeku. Zaleva right now, 46th national ranking in singles. Ana Roman Dominguez, the senior from Spain, the two-time player of the week this year in conference. She played Kuznetsova in singles when they met last week. As Kuznetsova would take that one. Yeah, it's tough. This is an interesting one with this matchup. Dominguez is going to probably play some keep away with a forehand and mix the heights and try to move the liver around. But the challenge I feel is that the backhand from the liver here in rhythm, being able to take a ball that has rhythm and dictate, that's a tricky time on. I feel that Dominguez is going to have to maybe mix some more backhands, maybe more than normal if she's uh, going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe on the left side of the court with the liver. We mentioned it's been tougher sledding this week for the Bulls. 4-2 to two, the win over Cincinnati. 4-3 the comeback against SMU. Each of those wins have been without capturing court one in singles this week. I see that the Lave is really dictating and looking to move the ball around. Is not afraid to apply some pressure. And a little fortunate playoff the net there. For sure, and that courts are obviously not planned. But what I what I feel is that the format of doubles first just gets everyone in more of an aggressive mindset before singles. And in junior tennis, you play the singles all day, and then at five o'clock at night you play doubles. And sometimes it's hard to break single cycles. Here, you know, the the mindset of dictating and coming forward starts the matches in singles, and I think it makes for a better singles product. Zalevia. So Zaleva's been informed this week, the, again, sophomore Russian about to receive this serve. Number one singles, unfinished in the quarterfinals against Rayer of Memphis, but in the semifinal took care of business against uh, nationally ranked Okolova of Tulsa in straight sets. As dominant as the Knights have been, they have never won the final day of the conference tournament looking for that first ever title. This is only the second meeting between these two rivals in the conference championship tournament. That last meeting did go to the Knights back in 2015, a 4-0 sweep, but 
It's a Bulls program that's dominated the all-time series 19 to 6 with just recent success for the women out of Orlando. Yeah, UCF has done an outstanding job here connected to facilities, connected to hiring both John Roddick and Brian Kanyeko. So there's a lot of newness here and probably going to be seeing from UCF the uh, these championship runs and possibilities for a lot of years to come. A lot of rain yesterday. Hopefully we got that out of our system. Luckily with a venue like this, plenty of courts for both the women and men to, for the most part, stay on schedule with the exception of this championship clash sliding over here to this final Sunday. Again, this is number one singles. Anna with the serve here. Just out. So any of those chips are going to possibly float. Under spin with the wind behind you will make the ball float. And it's a great return by Zaleva. And uh, Dominguez is trying to just kind of play a little bit of a slice and get back to neutral. You know, it's obviously a good player will do on defense, but she's got to be careful when she measures that underspin. That just cost her the break. Very early in first set on all six courts. Uh, Knights with a slight edge on five of the six courts. And there's the volley from the doubles coming forward and applying pressure. And Zaleva up two games to none. About to serve 15 love. Lincoln Rose, Mark Bay with you, along with Haley out in court side. Grounding a champion for both the women and men today. It's the Bulls and Knights in both of our championships. No, that's great defense. As Ana Roman Dominguez is able to find some real estate and takes advantage. Learned the lesson from that last underspin shot that she lost on, felt that lob up. Great first serve. Now 30-15. There were a lot of first serves in that doubles match. And I, I keep sort of hitting the nail with the hammer about this, but the, the serve location concentration from doubles as well carries into singles. And now hopefully more first serves are executed in the beginning of singles because of the doubles focus. Second serve here, 30-15, up two games, Love. No, it's a miss hit. And it's getting closer, perhaps, to the first three games falling the way of Zaleva. Yeah, she just hit a basic ground stroke past the service line to a big target. She's just behaving so confidently. I just like the way she's carrying herself. Really under control here. She only dropped two games in that semifinal singles matchup against Tulsa two days ago. Neither of these teams in action yesterday due to the rain. That's really hard to do. It's hard at the, the top positions to beat anyone that bad. The best players on all the teams are actually really formidable opponents. Yeah, she seemed to get stronger throughout even that second set commanding 6-0 victory. And that's what I meant by using the slice there. Try to mix it up and not just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the backhands. That was the first time she stepped up and actually brought that tactic in. Big point here. Can Roman De Dominguez force Deuce and no ad? Possibly pull a game back. Chance to go up 3 0. Go, Bulls! Yeah, overshooting it. And this, you hear the big vamos there. 
having this game points sometimes can give you this sense that you're in control, but if you don't take care of them, it sends the wrong message to a tough competitor. And right now, Dominguez is looking for some type of spark. And she could possibly just skate out of this game and then have a 2-1 scoreboard instead of a 3-0. Be a big shot in her arm. How big is this one right here? I think substantial relative to the first set here just because the Leva's come out with I think is a very strong game plan on how she's going to play and has been executing quite well. Do you know that this, uh, this senior's not going down without a fight? Again, Lake Nona, we are actually right on the cusp of the uh, major airport here in Orlando. You'll hear a few planes going by and for those who were lucky enough to get a window seat, able to look down at some championship tennis today. Yeah, you're getting some old school U.S. Open 1978 feel out here. She is chasing that service toss so far to the right. Very fortunate that that wasn't a double fall. Now Dominguez has the type of points she wants, slowing things down. Third game up for grabs with this point. That's the type of point she wants to play and win. Ana Roman Dominguez paddles back after dropping the first two games to claim her first of this opening set now within one. Yeah, and there that, that she finally took a risk, and she took the right risk with a big cross-court ground stroke, a little bit of help from Mother Nature, too, to draw the error, and now Zaleva, you know, probably wishes she would have taken care of some of those first serves and first shots there in the early parts of that game. So the senior able to battle back there. Over on number four singles, we've seen Amelie Boy battle back. She's trailing two games to one. USF's best showing has been on five singles with Zynga up two games to one on Serrano, but uh, we've seen the Bulls drop some games early on. Let's settle in here on four singles. Amelie Boy down two games to one. Here on the near side, across the way, Marie Mattel. And Amelie Boy, uh, the freshman who came through with the clincher in the semifinals against SMU here on four singles. She actually was third in the rotation in the quarterfinal against Cincinnati. But she was able to take that thrilling court four against Perez Lopez of the Mustangs. They went to two playoffs in the first two sets before Boy was able to lock it up. Oh, that's well played. Very solid. Stayed within herself, playing a good cross court backhand rally. Got herself back to Deuce. And she's matched up with the French freshman, Mattel. Another one of those three newcomers this semester. Mattel's been perfect this week, both against Memphis and Tulsa. Able to take court number four in straight sets on both times. Oh my goodness. She misjudged the ball. Oh wow, that's unfortunate. She had a great first serve. Mattel has a little bit of a whippy forehand, so there's going to be some spin and action after the bounce when it hits. 
instead of taking that ball on the rise. See, that's, that's a bad miss hit there. That's not a well-hit ball. And then she decides to take the backwards. You always have to take that ball on the rise. That's a tough way to lose the game there from a visual judgment standpoint. Yeah, all of a sudden you become just at the mercy of waiting for that ball. Yeah, but that ball is moving like a bumblebee. It's <laughs> hard, hard to time that. Again, you're looking at number four singles. Yeah, so in there, she ends up stepping in and cracking it. So she's giving you a lot of different dimensions. High roll, fade side spin, and then, you know, directive power. She's won a lot for this team in this short period of time that she's been here. Mattel serving 15 love here. And again, this also is a new matchup for these two teams. And while you don't wish illness, as was the case that removed the Knights' top player when they met a week ago, it really has created a more interesting matchup today, not simply just rematches from a week ago. Stay here on number four singles, but we'll let you know again. Over at court one, uh, on a Roman Dominguez able to pull within a couple, trailing three games to one. Bulls also trailing on courts two and three by one game. Zingas come through on singles court five, up three games to one. Uh, but the Knights have also controlled court six. It's the Bulls who have the burden of taking four of these six courts if they are going to be a three-time champion. Okay, there's that high positional roll. Busy day once we get to singles. We'll take a look at half of the courts right here. That is number one singles in your top left. The court we've been watching, number four singles in your top right. And six singles there in the bottom left between Sharma and Mios. Again, Alexandra Mios, we did not see her in doubles. Right now she's at the top of your screen there. Uh, I should say the top of the court there in the bottom left corner. So right now we're looking at one, four, and six. And a reminder as we look in on these courts, an easy way to keep track of your favorite student athlete if we aren't watching them right now, head on over to the Americans Championship page, theamerican.org. Go to their championship central for women's tennis. You'll see a link in the right-hand column for live stats. So that was a bunch of unforced errors, uncharacteristic of Mattel there to give the break back. So she actually won the break a little fortunately and now with three unforced errors there two forehand and a backhand it's three two at number four singles number six is probably the, the biggest you know scoreboard discrepancy here with a three love lead for the knights here sharma off to a great start and now a point actually she just gets the point for four zero So Nandini Sharma, the redshirt freshman out of India, didn't get to see her court come to a con finish against Tulsa after a sweep for the Knights in the semifinals two days ago. She did pick up a win in the quarterfinal on court six in straight sets. Again, number one singles in the top left, four singles in the top right. And six singles there in the bottom left here on the American Digital Network. Knights with the edge on every court except for singles five at the moment, where Zynga is hanging on to a 3-2 lead in the opening frame. Oh, that's 
big. Zaleva has got it back together again. Broke right away. And now she's in a tight one with another deciding point here at number one singles. And there's been a lot of choices to go to the ad side by all the teams on the deciding points. Here she comes with the net appearance and the pass is on the line. She backed off on the approach shot, did not fully commit to hitting it as big as possible, wanted to make sure that she got it in, but underplayed it and gave Ana Dominguez just enough room to get behind it and hit the pass cross court. That's a big moment there. So again, Zaleva hanging on up one game against Roman Dominguez on number one singles. That has gotten tighter. Yeah, it feels like she's up by a lot. And the truth is that she's only up by a little. She came back early in some early games. Otherwise, we could even be talking about Roman Dominguez with the slight advantage there at number one. Right now, you see court six, five, and four from left to right. It's our first glance at that fifth court where Zing is up three games to two against Nat Serrano. And right here at court four, closest to us, again, Boy and Mattel. Serve for Boy. And really, even though there are a fair amount of service breaks back and forth in some of these matches, this is not like we're watching Isner versus Kevin Anderson. So <laughs> we're not six foot 10 with 150 mile an hour serve. So between with the wind, against the wind, and a little bit of pressure, we have the ability to break back a little bit more, especially as you get more comfortable and familiar with the other person's games. Let's zoom back out and taking as much action as we can here. Yeah, number one singles right now in your top left. Six singles right below it. And in your top right, you actually see both four and a hint of court five as well. On court four, Mattel has just taken her fourth game up four to two. This is a game point for 5 0 lead for Sharma down low. And she gets it done. Yeah, Sharma may be the first to capture a set. Now one game away against Mios on court six. And that's important because when you're when you're playing these matches, it's the doubles points to start, and then the second stage of trying to win these matches is earning first sets. And you want to try to win as many first sets across the board as you need to possibly win the match. So for USF, that would be four. And for the Lady Knights, that would only be three. Yeah, it's a Knights team, 21 and three this year, six and oh in regular season play in the American. They think they're probably right on the outside edge of being a national seed. All they can do is control what's ahead of them, including today's championship match. Yeah, and with the new format, ultimately, if you're top 16, you get to host the first two matches. You can have your home fans and crowd. But with the new format that's just started this year, there's a round of 16 that no longer is at the championship site. That is at an actual individual yeah. campus of the highest ranked team. So a team like UCF, if they're currently 25 in the nation, they, they'd have to go and beat, obviously, a top 16 school in that round. But still could potentially in the round of 16 it's gonna be, the first one be on the road again. So this like may be the last time they are at home unless they get all the way to the Elite Eight. UCF, I mentioned 15-0 and and home officially, have not lost here in Lake Nona this year. And while I have noted 6-0 and in conference, again, it, it's easy to overlook that they were 10-18 and against conference competition here in the American before this year.
Great strides under head coach Brian Kinyeko. Thirty all here in this sixth game. Oh, and there's the slice. She out of nowhere brings in that mix. So two things are happening here. Number one, number one, Zaleva is backed off a little bit of her net aggression. I think that that passing shot on Noad Point got a big gun shot. And Ana Dominguez is starting to play inside the court and definitely use the slice backhand tactic more. Sharma on court six, bottom left, up 30 love in the sixth game, has a chance to claim the opening set. And really drive home an advantage in singles for UCF where they only need half of the courts available to go their way. Now it's going to be 30-15. Again, Sharma up five games to none. And we'll note while Court six may fall in a moment. Singles number two in a moment. We'll hope to jump over there where uh, Senya and Vanya may see that first set wrap up in just a moment. Last two points here to hang on. Unfortunately, that wasn't a great net appearance there by Mios. She snuck in, having the wind at her back, but wasn't effective the first volley. Here is number two singles for the first time today. We look in on Kuznetsova and Klarich. Kuznetsova up five games to one in this opening set. Clarich with a win against SMU in that comeback yesterday here at number two singles. Came back after dropping the first set. We did not see her in the quarterfinal against Memphis. Sometimes it's tough when you, you, you lose the doubles point and then you obviously go from the doubles point and have to actually play the same opponent. Sometimes as a, a carryover from that particular match into the singles match. And as Mark alluded to, Claridge was paired with Zynga over on doubles number one against Senya Kuznetsova, who's across the net right now. That would be one of the two courts to go the way of the Knights for that doubles point. I like it. So she's not only taking the ball early against the wind, but then she's looking to employ the drop shot tactic that makes a lot more sense against the wind. And she's waiting there. Easy pass to go by. So set point here for Kuznetsova. Roll to the backhand mix. Cleric took the bait, misses it. First set, Lady Knights. Sanya Kuznetsova becomes the first knight to capture an opening frame. First set goes her way on number two singles. We may see six singles and four singles follow suit soon enough as well. But 
Uh, Senya becomes the first to officially lock up a set in favor of the Knights. Back over to six where we saw Mios hang on just a moment ago to claim her first game against Sharma. Alexandria Mios, sophomore out of Austin, Texas. Again, picked up a win on court six against Hollebeck of SMU in straight sets. And a miscue there. We'll note over at singles five, Nat Serrano has turned things around. So presently, UCF is in the driver's seat on all six courts today. And it's going to be 30 all unless that was a let with the additional ball coming into play. And I think that's going to be the case for player safety. Yeah, the referee saw the ball coming over. So serving 30-15, but trailing one game to five. That's a great ball. Just able to find that back line. And could Mios be pulling herself within three games here in the opening set? Well, sometimes, you know, you get down big and you just emotionally disconnect from the score. You accept it, you know, in your back end, and you just start playing better tennis. And that can, that can help you. It may not always get you back from a 5-0 lead to a win in the set, but possibly can get you into the match and, and you can possibly try to take the second set. Every court is still in the first set with the exception of number two singles where we saw Kuznetsova claim the frame for UCF. It's tricky. She's sneaking in sometimes, maybe uh, not at the best times, and with her left leg heavily bandaged, I'm wondering if she may have some challenge with lateral movement and may have to come forward a little bit earlier than normal. I always try to suggest to players that you want to make the passing shot player uncomfortable. was able to hang on for the last game. Let's see if Sharma can return the favor here, battling back 40-all. Of course, no ad again. Good sportsmanship there. That ball was very close to the line. Mio's called it good, which you like to see. Now set point. Set point, he's on one. Should I drop a filter? Good discipline there by Mios, just allowing herself to battle and use the wind and play solid geometry and not take any risk and put the pressure on Sharma to finish there. She dropped the first five games, but Mios, who again was idle during doubles, has bounced back to take the next two. Meanwhile, all the way to the opposite end here to number one singles. Set point, and there it is. Big forehand by Zaleva to get it done and close the door on the first set. So the only two courts where we are moving on to set two, it's the Knights 
with the advantage. Let's see in a moment here if we can slide to court three, where it is a dead even battle between Stolmar and Pelicer Pareo. Uh, another look here at the point to claim the set. Yeah, excellent rotation, great spacing, well-produced shot. Hit it with confidence there. Again, the Bulls have yet to establish an advantage on any court, but there are two tight ones, both singles three and five. Let's take a look at three here. Where it's five games apiece between Stolmar of UCF and Pelicera Pareo of the Bulls. Dolmar had slid up to two singles again when these two met during the regular season. Tucked back into three singles this week with a win against Memphis. Did not finish, though had an advantage in the semifinals against Tulsa. And here's a chance for the Bulls again to take a lead on a court. And at the moment, that doubles point going the way to the Knights, really an obstacle for the Bulls to overcome. It's a big time backhand there. Does a heck of a job with the defense. <laughs> Use of her hands. Saw Laura, a little fist pump. The freshman from Spain showing off her range. You were impressed with the backhand. That time, able to put it away with the forehand. Again, Laura out of Valencia. Back over to six singles. Remember, Alexandra Mios doesn't have any other plans. And she's decided to stick around here in this opening set. She's taking the last two games. And as you start watching games go by, it's easy to mentally start checking the scoreboard and thinking about what happened and instead of just getting into the here and now and just playing a solid point. And that's what Sharma needs to do here after an era that, that far along. That's almost like a first game era. She's got to really dial in here and understand what pattern she needs to play. And this is the, the role of, of college tennis where you actually have a coach on the side to maybe give you a play. Sharma, the redshirt freshman from India for the Knights here on the near side. Across the way, Mios, the sophomore from Austin, Texas. just long. So that's not a good time for Mios to make that error because your opponent is clearly not finding the court and missing serves by 10 feet and ground strokes by 10 feet. You don't want to give her a set point without working for it. We mentioned Mios from Austin, her head coach, certainly familiar with the capital city over there in Texas. Christina Moros, former national champion with the Longhorns, four-time All-American, including when she was Big 12 Player of the Year. And... Uh, Recent inductee at the Texas Hall of Honor for her Longhorn career. Well deserved. It's an actual display of amazing tennis coach backgrounds in all of our finals today. John Roddick with his career at University of Georgia on the Pro Tour. Ashley Fisher, top 500 in the world and top 10 in the world in doubles. Christina Moros, All-American at Texas, and Brian Kenyeko, All-American at Ohio State. Just great, great playing careers from all four of the coaches that are involved in today's finals. 
And we're seeing a lot of great new college venues popping up, including there in Austin. But college tennis, the investments are starting to really kick in. Obviously a great partnership here with USTA for UCF. Yeah, I agree, and it, it's wonderful to start seeing some of the facilities, the, the facility at Oklahoma State in Stillwater and the facility at SMU, you know, almost like a basketball stadium inside, second to none. So it's, it's nice to see that happening and the expenses uh, trickling down from some of the other positive aspects of student life and, you know, some of the other sports helping a, a non-revenue sport like tennis still have the right type of prominence and showcase. And we've seen it immediately lead to an advantage in recruiting. And almost immediate success for the respective programs. You're looking at singles one in the top left. In a moment, we'll isolate our focus on singles three. Where Pelissero Pareo and Stolmar it's the bull up six games to five in the opening set. We'll get over to the court three in just a moment. As that was singles five. And that's not that easy of a shot to actually be standing there close to the single sideline and then crack an overhead flat down the line with only a couple of feet of margin for error. It looks easy because the ball was moving slow, but that's actually not an easy shot to make in tennis. Stolmar's serve, but it's Pelister Pareo who is trying to give the Bulls some hope here on court three. Currently leading. 6-5 in the opening set. Set point here. Right, it's just trying to... Oh, that's a well-played point. And the opening frame on court three goes to Laura Pelicer Pareo, 7 5. And some good news for the women from Tampa. Yeah, it's nice to have someone somewhere have a positive. That can actually trigger more positives down the line. And you hope some of the other courts could hear. Again, that there was good news around the bend. There might be more good news for the Bulls coming up over on court five. Right now, we're looking at your top singles. Where Ana Roman Dominguez dropped the first set but took the opening game here in set number two. Continues her serve. And that's an important stage after you've had that hard fought set. And Zaleva has, has, has had the, the, the great sort of positive feel good of, of closing out that set to jump on it right away, get a break, and now be serving 1 0, serving, obviously, this is 15 30 here, but to try to get a two love lead here would quickly help. And things perhaps starting to snowball for the bull. And she's experienced. She's been around the block. She knows that you know, this team is probably not going to go for the hard way and win unless she can flip her particular match. So she takes that, that type of responsibility on. And I don't see her going down without an extreme fight. Bulls came into this year with 10 players on their roster, losing one to a torn ACL. But the remaining nine have all seen time in the singles lineup for Coach Moros. And a great story is that bonus player they have, 11-year-old Elizabeth Jones, part of Team Impact now, past couple of years. See so many programs pairing up with Team Impact, working with chronically ill children, often setting aside a locker for them making them 
an honorary member of the team. Over on four singles, Mattel for UCF took the first set 6-3 over Boy. Now Zinka here at five, trying to give the Lady Bulls some more positive life. Yeah, Zinga across the way, up six games to five. About to serve 15 love. That's a great shot. And Zinga is trying to become the second bull to take the opening set of her court here on five singles. Nicole, the senior from Zimbabwe. It's been nice to see a lot of the girls going back to the towel pacing of that, something you see in professional tennis often when they're on for a stare or a big moment, they use the ball kid and they go to the towel. That professionalism is helpful, I think, even in a collegiate format like this. Yesterday, they would have been going to the squeegee. <laughs> and this surface playing beautifully today. After all the rain yesterday, that changed some plans. We were going to crown the champion yesterday for the women. The men today instead a double header today. And as it played out, it is all Knights and Bulls, both this morning and afternoon. That includes the men. An exciting rivalry as it is. And of course, we had a, another trophy to the mix. Serving 15-30. Yeah, unfortunately, she's starting to miss the first serve. And every second serve then makes her a little more nervous, slightly tighter. And then the first couple ground strokes related to that are kind of down the middle and safe. Now she's just worried about double faulting. She gets that in. Now she's going to probably just see that's a ball right in the middle of the court, inside the service box, inside the service box. So you start off playing a little bit tight. And then, then you go from super tight to trying to hit a winner, and it's a difficult transformation to do that sometimes. Could we be destined for a playoff here in the opening set between Zenga and Serrano? And this is a court that the Bulls thought perhaps they could grab for some more momentum. But the Knights not letting go. As we go to five, where we're now even six games apiece in the opening set. And you can hear there's a little bit of breeze going on there. It's common that the wind is fairly calm in the mornings, and then as it gets later in the day, it picks up a little bit. So this is a 10 a.m. match. And Obviously, we've moved on and getting closer to noon. Wind will be more of a factor as this closes out. So court three is still the only court where the Bulls have taken the first set. First set has gone the way on four courts for the Knights. Still being contested here on court five. It's a big shot there. It's a good risk, taking a middle forehand there and fading it inside out. Even though she's down 1-0 there, I feel like from the, the doubles that I saw from her earlier, she is capable of playing inside the service box. So if she can get some opportunities to come forward, it will probably help her. Sometimes being against the wind where she is now allows you to hit a little more freely because you can crush it and won't fall out. So hopefully she can create some positive impacts right now, gain some confidence, be able to pull this breaker. Uh, 
That was unfortunate. She used a couple of cross-court rolls to get some position and time, but the ball she chose to unload on was higher than her shoulder, and it's not the easiest one at the time. Well, UCF, we mentioned this is their home, but they've played a big non-conference matchup here, part of college match day. The women took on another in-state foe. The Florida Gators had a dramatic finish. They do such a nice job with college match day as uh, this is a venue that can attract top programs from all around the country. The Knights women happened to draw the Gators. The men had a dramatic finish against those Hurricanes of Miami as well. But no strangers to playing big time matches here on their home court at the USTA National Campus. They are hoping to lock up their program's first American Championship today. Right now, just one point's been claimed. That was the doubles point for UCF. So a lot of tennis to take place across these six courts. Yeah, and Serrano's completely pulled back. She's not taking any risk. Zynga has all the responsibility of dictating and is not hitting the court right now. She should probably pull back herself. It's getting away from her 4-1 down. Yeah, our first tie break of the day. And as we're midway through, they'll I believe swap ins. Again, courts one, two, four, and six. The first set all went to the Knights. We saw Pelicer Pareo claim the first set for the Bulls on court three, and it's still up for grabs on court five here with Serrano and Zynga. Right now, the tie break. That's a great first serve. Often you find that when they change ends, there's an adjustment on the service toss because of the breeze. She handled that perfectly. So Serrano still clinging. Now to that 4-3 edge here in the tie break. Second serve coming up. She's in position to attack. And just by standing there in that position, moving forward, sends a message. And just as I mentioned, Zynga does a great job handling the serve adjustment, changing in. Serrano, unfortunately, double faults. And now three straight faults in a row. Just like that, we're wow. level. I didn't mean to jinx her. I really didn't. <laughs> but this is important. It's, it's one of those little things that, that happens sometimes. Now a coach comes over, gives us some positive there because it's still 5-4. Christina Sanchez Quintanar, former Texas A&M, standout in her own right, wrapping up her career five years ago. You have one player making first serves, one player missing first serves, and look at the difference in this tiebreaker from 4-1 down. From down 4-1, you flip ends of the court, it's been all Zynga. Momentum has flipped in this particular set three different times. She's taking the last four points now. She hasn't lost since she's changed ends. Make it the last five points. Chance to claim it here. Just off the mark, second serve coming up. Looking for that seventh point here in the tie break to give her the first set against Serrano. Oh goodness, half a step too far away from the ball. Not just yet. Uh, tie break must win by two. Oh, 
Zenga still with a chance to do so right here. That's one heck of a first serve. Oh my goodness. And she hit a great forehand too. Snuck in, but the defense from Zenga. Nicole Zenga claims the opening set thanks to the tie break. What a comeback on singles court five. So she joins Laura Pelicer Pareo as the two Bulls to take the opening set on their courts. Still a lot of work to be done. But again, we have seen moments like that start to trickle across the courts throughout the years. See if it's contagious. Again, back to number one singles there in the top left, six singles in the bottom left. And you see in the top right there, court number three. Number one singles, Zaleva took the first set 6-2, despite a valiant effort from Ana Roman Dominguez down the stretch, but Zaleva's picked right back up in set two now, up three to one. Uh, Roman Dominguez has a chance to pull within right here. As this is love 40. Sharma's back on the steamroll train. The quick 5-0 lead she had in the first set. She's at a 4-0 of the second. That could be the second point of the day if Sharma is able to continue this showing in the bottom left of your screen there on court six. We won't count Mios out just yet, though. That's the beauty of tennis, though. And as you saw in the first set, being ahead, this is not football. You can't run the football and run the clock out. It's not basketball with a bunch of foul shots and, and fouls, intentionals. Tennis, you actually have to make the shots and close the door to win. Again for the Bulls. Anna's been your consistent number one. We've seen uh, a handful at number two throughout the year. A lot of freshmen have stepped up. This is an outstanding job here in this point at the top of our screen. Valeva has just refused to stop ripping and staying on offense. And there she is finishing. Completely committed to staying on top of the baseline, applying pressure with her forehand until she got an opportunity to finish. Excellent point. And it's good to take some time after a point like that. Collect yourself, rack it in a non-dominant arm, shaking it out and relaxing. And as the theme of the day, I'd say 90% of the no ad points have been taken on the ad side. So clearly it seems like a strategy for both teams. Second straight year, the Knights are our number one seed. That did not lead to a title, let alone a trip to the final last year in Dallas when the Mustangs of SMU were our great hosts. That said, uh, Zaleva was not on that lineup. One of your three newcomers this year for the Knights. Instant impact at the number one spot. Well, that's a big moment, though, because it wasn't just that she played quality tennis, particularly on that 40-30 point. She got in a mud pit and just out tussled Dominguez who is a very tough out from an emotional and competitive standpoint. She's doing this on both sides. Doing it with a racket and doing it with her fight. So Zaleva leads four games to one in the second set after taking the first set 
And what I like is Coach Kenyeko comes over, gives her a tap on the leg, and keeps walking because you can't really say much. She's like doing a pitcher outstanding throwing a no hitter. Yeah, she's doing an outstanding job. All you can do is just you know support her and keep it moving. Sharma up five games to none. Perhaps just a few points away from claiming the point there in the bottom left there on court six. And Sharma and Mios. Sharma took the first set, 6-2, up five, Love. In the second. Let's give our full focus here to Nandini Sharma and Alexander Mios. That's well done. Great job ripping the big cross court forehand against the wind, getting inside the court. And the contact point on that put away ball was perfect. Right at her shoulder, makes your opponent have to guess. And then as you see your opponent breaking with their hips one way or the other, the winner is free. Outstanding dictating play. Again, this is trying to close out the match against the wind. 6 2 5 0. The freshman from India, possibly just two points away. And that's a great shot. I, I just think that this bandage on her leg is maybe telling a story that we don't know. Because she's sneaking on some balls that I'd say are not necessarily the best ones. And I, I, you got to feel that like maybe she might be hurting a little bit. And Sharma's recognized it and wants to put the hammer and the nail in this coffin. For their first singles point of the day, second serve coming up from Sharma again, one of your three newcomers this year, making that immediate impact for the Knights. Well played. Great and backhand. Court six is still alive for now. It'll be 40 15 the serve here coming up for Sharma. Only the doubles point has been claimed so far. That went to the Knights. Mio's hanging on here on court six. Oh, goodness. But ultimately, it falls. Our first singles point of the day will go to Sharma and the Knights. Our overall tally now. The Knights lead two points to none. Yeah, that was the story of the match. Some net appearances. But just have not been able to go Mios' way. Sharma too steady. Andini Sharma, the freshman from India, in straight set, 6-2, six 6-0. Six no her day is done. And she now, with a chance to cheer on her teammates the rest of the way, back to singles court number one. Had a big moment here. This is a no-add point for a potential 5-1. Again, Zaleva for the Knights across the way. Roman Dominguez there it on is. the near side. Zaleva took the first set 6-2. Now 5-1. A chance to 
all of a sudden put the Knights on the brink of a championship. But she's put on quite a display because there's been some ebb and flow in this match and some back and forth, and you've seen the signs where Ana Dominguez is capable of stealing herself back into the match from a competitive and emotional standpoint, physical standpoint, and it's just not to be had. Bulls were playing for almost an extra hour two days ago after the Knights had wrapped up their semifinal win. Bulls needed that comeback against SMU after dropping the doubles point. That's bad luck. But what happens sometimes when you're playing the counterattack inside of a match like Dominguez has been playing, you get your opportunity with the win that you're back to come forward and then you're not able to execute. Underplayed the overhead going to the big part of the court, left up too much space. Again, Valeria did not play a week ago when these two met. And their traditional war on I-4 rivalry. And she'll go wide with the error here. This would be the next court to fall. As number one singles continues in your top left. Top right, three singles. We've already seen six singles wrap up. And what happens when you get a lot of contagious winning going on? The dominoes can fall in a hurry. This is singles five in the bottom left between Zenga and Serrano. Remember, they went to the tie break. Zenga was able to claim it for some good news for the Bulls. In that first set, Zenga's also taking the first game here in the second frame, but Serrano on the cusp of claiming her first game. Our focus will remain in the top left here with number one singles. Zaleva up five games to one and a potential closeout set two. Serving 15-40. And now it singles four. some opportunity there. Well, again, Ana Roman Dominguez battled throughout that first set. A few things, had they gone her way, could be a different story here in the second set. But we continue to see her putting up a fight again in this second front. You would expect no less from the senior. Let's check in here on Zynga and Serrano on court five. Again, they went to that classic tie break in the first set. It went to Nicole. We are early in the second set here, about to transition over to court two where Kuznetsova easily took the first set over Klarich 6-1, but here a much tighter story. It was 4-3, although Senya just took the most recent game now 5-3, and perhaps she could be the next night to claim a point for the team. And 
And Mark, this is one of the few matchups where you noted earlier these two were staring across the net in doubles play. Slide over a couple of courts and continue their battle here in singles. Yeah, you sometimes get the opponent from doubles and singles as well, and it gives you a nice warm up and a sense of how they play. And sometimes you run into someone that you hadn't hit against at all. Now the dynamic of college tennis is such that you warm up with your team and then you just start playing against your opponent. So the intel and the background information becomes important because as a player you don't get that observation period to get a sense for how your opponent hits before you start competing for score. Senya and her teammates have not dropped a point, not doubles nor singles all week here at the conference championship. A sweep of Memphis and Tulsa knocking off the eight and four seeds today, staring at the two seed Bulls. Well, that's bad luck. It's good pressure, good aggression from Claridge. Crushed the backhand, and rightly so. She should have come in behind it. The lob gets a little bit of wind help, gets up just high enough, and she's not able to take care of business on the overhead. A lot of poise from the Lady Knights. I like how they've been pacing the matches, the body languages. All just 16 second cure machines. That's something that uh, is an old uh, concept from Dr. Jim Lear many, many years ago about how to handle the body language at the end of one or lost points in tennis. In the Knights right now with two points. That's a big time shot. Bulls trying to hold off a quick wave of perhaps a third and fourth point, which would end the day in a hurry for UCF. They took the doubles point. They took the singles point over on six. And there's nothing wrong with that point there. Because most of them makes her hit. WTA level backhand to win the point. If she can make that shot, great. If she can make it four times, all right. You don't worry. Clearly up 30 love there. That was a good test. And we'll see if Claire can keep shot making her way back into this. Let's it bounce this time, settles in, and finishes well. So it's the backhand right now of Claire. It's just creating the openings for her. Vanya Klerich. So getting interesting here in the second set, but over on number one singles, we'll shift our attention there in a moment. That could be the next domino to fall for the UCF Knights in pursuit of a title today. So we've got match point on both one and two. We maybe almost need to show them both simultaneously. Yeah, court side by side. Here's number one. The match points on both. And you see the some of the teammates looking for an opportunity to rush the court. Deleva took the first set 6-2. This is your match point for court one. Doesn't get it done. Well, let's see about court two. <laughs> Go back to two now. Match points there as well. So you look at court two is there in your top right. Court one on your top left. Both of these on the cusp of possibly going the way of UCF. Yeah. That is a double fault to win. So Zaleva takes 
court number one. That's the third point on the day for the Knights. And now it all comes down to court two. And we couldn't catch it. That's how quickly it can get away from you. For the first time in program history, the UCF Knights are your American champions. With it, the automatic bid, the NCAA tournament, as the Knights sweep their way through the title this week in Lake Nona. First, it was the doubles point. Newcomer Sharma would take that point on court six. And within a minute of each other, Zaleva on court one. Kuznetsova on court two. And it means the trophy will stay right here with the women from Orlando. And look at Coach BK. He cracks a little bit of a smile. He's happy. He doesn't necessarily have the most jubilant behavioral patterns there, but he's very happy on the inside. This is an outstanding performance today with uh, the school having the opportunity to put this pressure and the seeding behind them and get a title, create that bit of history for the UCF Knights. A couple of great things happened three years ago for this UCF program, both the introduction of the USTA National Campus. It would become their home, officially the UCF Collegiate Tennis Center. And of course, the hiring of Brian Kinecto away from Brown University, where he'd only been a head coach for two years. Now in year three, he's done something that no other leader for this Knights women's program has done, and that is take them to the title here in the American Athletic Conference. Yeah, and they look like a top 25 team today from start to finish. There's no doubt. Half of his lineup today, not a part of the program, a year ago. Not a part of the program even back in the fall. But just instant chemistry and a special run for the Knights. And perhaps made it a little more special because of the women who are across the net from them today. And it looks like he recruited a couple of them with some dance moves. They're having a good time out there. Want to note for USF, quite a run here this week. Christina Moros in the Bulls, a lot of positives to take. They were your number two seed, a former champ in their own right, including the last time we were here to crown a champion two years ago. But this year it's the Knights. Did not drop a point all week here in Lake Nona. Yeah, it's a great season for USF. They've done a nice job. It's difficult to go out this way and probably not make the NCAA tournament without a win today. Some challenging uh, recent weekends for them when they lost to Rice in Houston and, and probably needed to win one of those or beat UCF last weekend to keep their ranking in position because with all the conference automatic bids, you, you need to be somewhere in the low 40s to for sure get uh, your ticket punched as an at-large bid. Well, the Knights came in again on the confidence of claiming that doubles point. And what a showing today for Coach Brian Kaneko's squad. The championship winning coach is with Haley Alton. Coach, first ever American title. How rewarding is it to see this year pay off for your group? Yeah, I'm just so happy for them, you know, for especially for our senior going away. You always want to get, leave the senior off uh, leaving the right way, and we did that this year. So, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, UCF, USF pushed us in, in uh, late in the match, and we're just happy to be able to clinch it. Five of six underclassmen in your singles lineup. What is the vision for the future of this program? 
I don't know. I just ready for the next practice. I guess that's the only thing we think about, and hopefully uh, that culture keeps what they've created, what uh, Natalia's created, and Rebecca, our junior captain, uh, keeps going for the future, and that's the only thing that matters. Having Valeria back in the lineup today, how did that impact the matchups from just a week ago against USF? Yeah, I mean she's a stud. You know when she shows up and she plays her game and she plays with passion. I mean she's she's as good as anyone in the country. So obviously her having her in there makes us that much better. So we're glad to get her healthy. You've worked hard to build up this program over the last three years. Where does this moment fall in your coaching memories up to this point? All right, it's my first uh, conference championship. So it took it took a while, but uh, well worth the wait. And I'm glad it was this group. Men's match coming up, a chance for UCF to keep two trophies here in Orlando today. Will your group be out there supporting them? Yeah, back to back, I hope. You know, uh, Coach Roddick, we're very close with him. He's, he's great to me. He's great to our team, and uh, our teams are super close, so we'll be pulling super hard for them coming up. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Haley, thank you again. A tease there for the men's championship coming up later on this afternoon. You'll be able to access it right here on the American Digital Network. Last time the Knights and Bulls collided, it was senior day for the Knights, and you heard coach reference Natalia Serrano, the only senior in the lineup this year, the two-time ITA scholar. What an impact she has made in her career as her career is going to continue. They are moving on to the NCAA tournament as your automatic bid winners your champions here in the american our coverage continues when we come back on the other side of this break ucf a 4-0 sweep today for the title dominance for a fourth straight year. Cueto from 30. Unbelievable. And be able to celebrate the seventh championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. People say we're big. Wow. Well, what is big? This is big. It's an energy. An opportunity. Big, baby. So go on. Dream big. Because big is just the beginning. I got it. <laughs> this is big. Championship ceremony getting underway. Let's listen in. We'd also like to thank our tournament referees, head referee Steve Laro and deputy referee. Mike Butler, as well as all of the tournament officials for the fine job they did. Let's have a round of applause for the officials today. First, let's give a warm round of applause for the 2019 Women's Tennis Championship runner-up, the Bulls from USF. Except for the 2019 American Athletic Conference Women's Tennis Championship team runner-up trophy, our seniors, Nicole Zane, Bonnie Clarch, and Anna Roland Dominguez. Congratulations once again to the 2019 American Athletic Conference Women's Tennis Championship runner up, the USF Bulls. And now, congratulations to the 2019.
senior Natalia Serrano. Russia, Nadine Sharma. Sophomore Rebecca Solar. Russian Zalika Turbish. Sophomore Valeria Zalika. Assistant coach Christina Sanchez Putinar. What a year for UCF. Perfect in the regular season, and that perfection continued this week on their home court at the UCF Collegiate Tennis Center at the USTA National Campus. The Knights march on to the NCAA tournament as your American champions for the first time in program history. The ladies deserved it. Start to finish, outstanding performances. Even the, even the courts where they lost sets, they were winning in the second sets. It just was a, a full team effort from start to finish. Coach Kanyeko has got his hat perfectly set. I think that the girls may have to work on uh, adjusting their championship rims. <laughs> They're not used to that because this is their first time, but boy, they are excited, well deserved, and going on to the NCAA tournament. I just think that having a conference championship under your belt always makes you dangerous. So, whoever they end up going to play against in the NCAAs, better look out. But the Lady Knights, I think, are on a mission, and uh, Coach Kanyeko's got them ready to go. Valeria Zaleva did not factor into that match against USF in the regular season, but she's certainly a factor this week. She is your most outstanding player for the Knights in their championship run. So a little extra hardware there for the third year sophomore out of Russia. It all began today when she teamed, a, teamed up with her fellow Russian and Kuznetsova in doubles to claim that doubles point for the Knights. And of course, they would only need half of the courts to fall in singles. A 4-0 final tally in favor of the Knights in this title run. Yeah, there's the dancing. And it's hard to win at one. And to dominate at one singles and one doubles like she did, she's very deserving of the player of the uh, the player of the tournament honors. It's one heck of a coaching tree coming from uh, Ty Tucker and the Buckeyes. Brian Kanyeko at UCF, Ross Wilson at University of Iowa, Drew Everly at uh, University of Denver, and Chris Klingerman at Northwestern. Lots of former Buckeyes that uh, learned other. Ty Tucker, who's currently the number one team in the nation right now with his system, and that is branching out and generating all types of positive uh, results across college tennis. Well, we heard from the championship coach. Let's now check in with one of his standout athletes today as Haley Outen has our most outstanding player. Lara, to be a part of this first ever tournament title for UCF, how special is this group? Oh, it is awesome. It's unbelievable feelings. It's like I can describe it. It's like, I can compare it even with a professional tournament. It's just like, it's another experience. You were able to help capture that doubles point. How did that set the tone for the rest of the match? Um, of course, double, first double points, it's, uh, it gives you confidence and everything like you, like, you go to, the, to your single spawn, so it very helps. Last week against UC, or USF, rather, you weren't in the singles part of the lineup. How did that impact the way that you came out today? Um, Still, I was watching that singles match, so I already knew like what to expect from this girl, and like I just wanted to to show my best tennis, and I did it pretty good, I think. <laughs> Exciting day for UCF, able to capture the women's title. The men are up next. How loud and supportive are you all about to be as they compete for a championship title as well? Uh, I I think that we're willing to do our best, and I think that. We have a good, we have a good, uh, uh, we have a good tennis, all of us, and I think that we can do that. All right, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Bye.
hoping for that sweep. Again, it is Knights and Bulls round two coming up in about an hour as the men collide for the championship on the American Digital Network. But the women's title will stay here in Lake Nona for the first time. The UCF Knights sit atop the American. They pair their regular season crown with their first tournament title and with it the automatic bid, a trip back to the NCAA tournament. For Mark Bay, Haley Alton, our entire ADN crew, we step aside. I'm Lincoln Rose. The Knights are champions.